everybody. It's me. It's Ann. I'm back. Yup, I'm back. So, what are all you been doing? Because I'm just going to kind of sit here and work on my crochet. I've got blankets to finish. and got to get started getting ready for Christmas presents. And all manner of foolishness like that. So, yeah, I thought I'd give you an idea of why I normally only do one film a week, unless I've got a specific collaboration that adds one, and don't necessarily spend a lot of time otherwise on the YouTube, even though as a quote-unquote retired old lady, one might think I have more time. Well, let me tell you about my week. We'll start with the six jars of pork jars of beef stew that was canned and put up. And then the six jars of chicken soup. The three quarts of chicken broth that was made with the by roasting the skins and bones and leftover veg from the soup and then strained and put through the whizzer machine and all that. Well, it was almost four quarts but it was a little bit too short for us to want to actually put it up. So we had the, the odd jar for dinner last night with the addition of a little bit of scrambled egg. We had egg drop soup in a skinny minute. Um, let's see. Six, yeah, six pints of pork and beans. And now if you like pork and beans, if you go to the grocery and get a standard, you know, can of pork and beans, it's, you know, whatever it costs around here, we get them for about 59 cents. I picked up a bag of dry beans at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And we put up nine cans of beans with the pinto beans. We did a combination of pork and beans and just plain pintos because then you can just dump the plain pintos into a pot and make refried beans, which my son loves. So, nine jars, which gives you the same basic amount as one of those cans in a pint jar. One dollar, nine cans. Yeah, I can work with this. Anyway, and we make really good pork and beans. And we did up some kidney beans in large jars so that we could do things like if we wanted to make chili, we don't have to worry about whether or not we've got dried beans soaked. You know, if it's if it's a quick thing that somebody wants to do, they've got those. Yes, we do have dried beans too. We use a combination of preserving techniques to keep food in the house. Now, most of the weather service is figuring since our area got it pretty easy the, la the winter before we got up here and last winter, they're expecting we're liable to get a bit more of an issue this year. And let me tell you, we sit in a broad valley 
in the Elkhorn Mountain Range. It's already snowing at the higher elevations. We're about halfway to the higher elevations at the level of our valley. So, yeah, we're going to put away some extra stuff to make sure that we've got food that if we get snowed in and or lose power, we can put the food in one of the cast iron pieces in the fireplace and be just fine till the power comes back. And with the food stored in cans like that, we don't have to open the refrigerator and freezer repeatedly and risk losing the food that's in those. We're getting ready to put up a big batch of chili. We've got to go to the store and pick up again. I've got four quarts of rhubarb pie filling. We need to go pick up more onions and stuff so we can do up the chutney. And then, when I'm not doing things like that, you know, it's like the general housekeeping kind of stuff. It's like we've got two dogs, you have to vacuum, we've got laundry, you gotta do it. We currently have a dead dryer, so. It has to go out in the backyard and be hung. Now, luckily, where we are, being at high desert levels, we don't have a lot of humidity. So if we've got even a least bit of a breeze, it doesn't take long for these clothes to dry out at yeah, average 28% humidity. Yeah, after being in Florida, this is a joy. But, yeah, it doesn't take that long for them to dry outside. Sorry about that, I got an itch. Yes, I know, it's not polite to scratch. May I remind you, I never said I was polite. I just said I was mean. Anyway. Yes, I'm wearing a very colorful shirt and a very colorful, colorful look and going nowhere today. This is an in-house day. I just don't like it. That's kind of the nice thing about makeup. If you just feel like it, it doesn't matter whether you're going someplace or not. You just play. I'm almost thinking about redoing my ID photo for my school identification and logo on my student page that, you know, pops up in the classes when we introduce ourselves and all that kind of stuff. And going, oh, I could do this one? Yeah. We'll see. Anyway, I am currently maintaining a 3.45 GPA. And at 61, yes, my birthday was a couple of days ago now. Um, I think that's pretty good. I'm not sweating it. You know, it's like I've only had to redo one class, and that was because I didn't, the instructor and I did not see eye to eye on a lot of things, and I took it upon myself to just say, <laughs> and just kind of blew it off, which is stupid. I'll be paying for that twice in more ways than so I'm redoing the whole class. But this time around, 
whether I like the instructor or not, I'm going to get at least a reasonable grade. Because it's not worth it to, to blow it at this point. I don't think you'd be in a college experience, though, if you didn't have at least one class that drove you crazy enough to at least consider just blowing it off and having to redo it. So, at least that's what I've been told by a few other people who went the standard route and was on campus and all that lovely stuff. So, but I like it. I'm enjoying it. I will have a bachelor's in English focus on creative writing and a double minor of business writing and psychology. My student advisor said, look, you're going through the rest of these courses like gangbusters. Some of these other courses done as minors, you could just tack on and with a couple of courses, cover them. Okay. Well, first she suggested one. And then she saw how I was going with that, and she said, how about we go for two? <laughs> so I now have the last of my courses laid out to the end of my program. I did think, because we all know I have political opinions, it, I did actually consider doing a minor in politics. However, I don't like math very well. I have a few issues after a brain injury with doing mathematics, which is really sad because at one point Army Corps of Engineers had offered me three different contracts to go to college as an engineer, dot, 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 and I was seriously considering it, and then I got married the first time. Big mistake. Way big mistake. Oh, anyway. But I no longer math as good as I used to. And the poly science minor requires a math course on statistics. Not so much. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I understand where statistics come into play with politics. I mean, I can quote statistical data on politics and remember the statistical data. Don't ask me to figure it out how to get to it. Don't ask me to do the formula to figure it out. No. Not this job. I don't got it no more. I can't do them numbers. Anyway, so politics was right out, and I said, well, being a writer and wanting to write fiction, sociology might be good, on top of the fact that I'm just, in general, kind of geared into sociology anyway, because of dealing with social services when it comes to, like, the two grandchildren that live with me, because those two get a lot of social services interaction because they're autistic and they have um, 
private assistance workers that come in from social services to help the household, A, get a little break, do a little more socialization, get the kids kind of used to going out of the house and behaving. Now, we don't let them get away with really rampaging behavior anyway. But it doesn't always filter through to them quite as well when it's the parents saying no and when it's somebody else saying no, this is not a good idea. Right now, Asher, once, once he gets his new assistant, that's going to be more about dealing with school because they're in an online school program. It's technically pub public school, but it's an online program for kids who don't do well in the standard classroom setting. And we're in a small little place. They don't really have a lot of um, support system here for special needs kids because there's not really that many of them in this little bitty town. So, yeah, what they don't have don't get funded. So, the school system does field trips with the kids that are on the online school so that they actually get to meet some of their teachers and meet some of their classmates and that kind of stuff. They do things like go to a pumpkin farm for Halloween and they go to the pool and they go to places like there's a resort up in the hills called Anthony Lakes that's got this really nice lake for swimming in in the summer and has snowboarding and that kind of stuff in the winter. And there's a splash park not too far away that they'll take the kids to. And the assistants are able to go with the kids to help them understand a little better and help the teachers keep track and help the parents keep track. Because let's be real, me and my husband sometimes go on the field trips with kid. We'll take them one at a time. But neither one of us can run. We just really can't. We busted. Jim's a stroke survivor. I've got multiple issues. We just don't run. So these assistants help keep the kids out of trouble and make it a lot easier on the rest of us to deal. My daughter-in-law is also disabled, so she can't run and chase. And three quarters of the time, if the kids are taking, are, are like, you know, out of the house, that gives my daughter-in-law and my son a little more them time. And it takes some of the pressure off my son because he's not having to make sure his wife can get places where she needs to be and trying to make sure the kids aren't getting into things they oughtn't be and that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's a big help having somebody else here. Now, some of the other things that I wish I was doing, like this weekend is the Rose City, which is in Portland, 
Rose City Comic Con. Ah, uh -huh. costumes and 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 actors and fans. Oh my! For those of you who understand the references we have at that convention, Weird Al, Tim Curry, Chris Eccleston, Dr. Nine, Billy Piper, Rose Tyler, Jason Isaacs, Malfoy Sr., All running around loose at that convention. And I'm not there. Well, for one thing, I didn't find out about it soon enough. I had no idea they had a Comic Con this time of year in Portland. So. Somehow, last year, I missed all the announcements, and I didn't see the announcements this year until it was way too late to try and plan. And we've had a few friends who said, look, if you can't afford your tickets in, we can help you. And I'm going, I love that, but Portland is a good six hours drive away from here. My car is not reliable. I'm looking for a new car. Anybody got any suggestions for a good used car that they think is reliable? I'd really appreciate it. And we'd have to get a hotel room. We'd have to eat. You know, it's like it's not just entrance to the convention. Jim and I used to do conventions all the time. East Coast. Oh, up and down the East Coast. It was fun. We did costuming. You know, what they now call cosplay. Everybody's got to have a new term. And let me tell you something. If you think cosplay or costuming is just for little skinny teenagers, back up, think again. Because it's fun. You get to be somebody else outside of yourself for just a little while. It's kind of like when you go to the, one of those fancy resorts and they treat you like you're rich people because you paid for the, you know, the cruise and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But you get to be somebody completely else. You could pick somebody from history. You could pick somebody from the future, from a book or a movie you're a fan of. You could be whoever you want to be for just a little while. And it is so much fun. And it is very much stress relieving. Unless you're one of those people who is worried that their costume just ain't quite right and will not make it through the costume contest. Yes, they do costume contests. We have several awards. Haven't been in years, though. So. So this is what I do when I'm not on the YouTube talking to you guys. Well, sometimes I'm on YouTube, but I'm watching other people's YouTubes so that I can support my, my besties. Now, on Instagram and a couple other places, I put the other, a few days back, that the uh, icy paint that I had put in my hair for the summer is completely faded. I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is not colorful. I started asking for suggestions. 
And another friend of mine, who's also on YouTube, was talking about being frustrated with her hair and at one point was threatening to buzz it off. And I'm going, hey, if you're going to buzz, if you want to buzz yours off, since I do mine like that on a semi-regular basis, usually after I fried all this with all the colors and the processing, I'll buzz it off and let the hawk regrow. And I told her if she really wanted to buzz her head, let me know, because I'll go with her. We will have a buzz championship. So far, all I know is she's squealed. I don't know if she's actually going to do it. I think her husband may have hid the clippers. <laughs> anyway. I'm getting ready to go take one of those lovely jars of rhubarb pie filling and make a delightful rhubarb crumble so that my son will shush. He's a fanatic about rhubarb. Absolutely loves it. I've learned to love it. When I was a kid, you couldn't get me to eat it. I didn't care what you mixed it with. I didn't care how much sugar you put on it. I just, it just, hmm. It was just not my thing. And I have apparently had a change in palate enough that it no longer offends me. And I go on about myself and make up this rhubarb. And use rhubarb in chutney and all other manner of things. And I make a really delightful rhubarb crumble. You know, with that really, really nice brown sugar and oat and butter crunchy top on it. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps me from having to make a whole pie. And we were getting cooler here. And I was going, I can make pie. It's getting cool enough. And then the weather got uppity. And we're back up in the 80s. So, yeah, crumble. Crumble it will be. Now, in case... You're wondering, yes, I will be back next week You uh, with my usually around Tuesday kind of thing. And then I've got some more collaborations coming up. We've got another one coming up with the AAK Girls. And with, you know, with Angie and Kaylee, and we're just going to keep rolling with stuff. And then we're coming up to Halloween month, coming up real quick here. So I'm going to be pre-filming a bunch of that to work on. I've got a collaboration for the first day of October already set up with the idea of getting straight into Halloween. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Now all of my Halloween stuff is going to be using what I have on hand. You don't have to go out and purchase the world to do Halloween. It's getting there. It's getting there. I still have some more rows to put together. This is the center of the blanket.
once that big center medallion is done, I can finish it up and just keep going round and round and round and round and round and round. Anyway, colorful look, lazy day. Are there such things in my world? I don't know about that. There are sometimes, but it's more a matter of I have overdone it and the fibromyalgia is jumping up and keeping me laying flat. I hate those days. Those are not fun. They're not even really lazy. They're just, they're just awful. Oh, yeah. I collect teapots. This is my new one. I just got this one at an estate sale. I love my teapots. I love tea. And I try real hard not to spill any. Be good.